How is it going guys? This is going to be the first episode of my RS tips and tricks and I have so much ideas, over 100 and if you guys have any ideas leave them in the comments for a chance to be featured in the video and I'll give you shout outs and whatnot because I think we can make this series pretty damn tight. I'm going to try and make this series mostly medium to high level tips but I will definitely try and throw some low level and some overall RS tips in so make sure you guys stay tuned. And I really do appreciate the support on the last money making video, we got 30k views in just under a couple days, that is amazing. And also, don't forget about the giveaway, there were so much comments, I'm probably going to pick 5 from this video, and 5 from the money making video. And guys, in the future, I plan to do a giveaway every like 2 weeks, the last one did so well, it seemed like so many of you guys really needed the gold, and it meant a lot to you. I'm going to have the next one be a lot bigger, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that. And like I said guys, to be entered into this giveaway, be subbed if you're not, leave a comment of your RSN, and have your privates on, so I can PM you if you win. The giveaway ends in exactly 2 days from this video. So uh, definitely have your privates on and make sure you like the video and I will get back to you guys. Hopefully you do enjoy. So guys, starting off at number one, this could be multiple tips, but I'm just going to put it out there for you. It is all food related. I feel like most of you guys don't know this and you could save yourself quite a bit of GP and uh, find some use for these things. Even you max levels which are not using these. I know you're not. So let's check this out. All right. So the first food item I want to cover is the purple sweet. You can buy these things for roughly 1.8k each. They heal from 1 to 4 HP and they regenerate your run 10 energy every single eat. It doesn't sound that good, but they stack guys. If you were to do some type of long trip or maybe even a hard quest that you're unsure about, you could bring a couple hundred and you know, maybe even when you're trying to get the fire cape, people sometimes do that, but it is a lost method. So the next one is summer pie. This is probably the best out of the whole lot. I would pay attention to this. This pie is 650 GP. It heals 11 HP each slice, which means it's 22 total. And it heals 10 run energy each slice eaten. And it gives you a 5 agility plus boost. This is something pretty good for blue dragons, even Ceratomen God Wars, or anything if you have to run to be honest and need food. This is damn good guys. 10 out of 10, I would definitely buy some. Something not as good but definitely valid is the pineapple pizza for 680 gold. It heals 22 as well and it has no special features like the summer pie. That's why I say the summer pie is so dang good. So the Guthix Restore is definitely used by a lot of peak areas, but some of you new players may not know exactly what it does. So each cup holds 4 sips. Each sip is 5 health, which equals 20, basically a shark, and it cures poison and you can eat it in between ticks, similar to a potion, because you know if you eat a monkfish or something like that, it'll delay your attacks for a couple seconds. I want to cover these two potions real quick in my recent money making guide, I showed you how to use these, and now I'm going to cover it. It's a Sanfu Serum, it is basically a super restore potion with an anti antidote potion and uh, save some inventory slots a little expensive but definitely worth it in certain situations and then last guys is the zami brew these things are a little expensive right now i don't know why they're on the rise i remember them being like 1.5k at some point so i'm not sure what's going on there so the feature is that it damages you based on your current hp as you can see i'm 99 attack if i were to drink a super combat or a super attack i would be 118 but i am 120 definitely really good for slayer tasks or if you want to hit pretty hard on bosses but sadly right now with the prices being so high, they're not that viable. Alright guys, so the next tip I want to cover is how to properly get a looting bag for the wilderness. That you should bring a looting bag when doing anything in the wilderness basically, especially green dragons. And uh, PKing anything, the looting bag takes literally 5 minutes, maybe 1 minute, maybe 20 seconds if you're lucky. And uh, let me show you guys how to get there. So I'm sure many of you guys have passed by this location while going to Chaos Druids or something. But yes, it's the thugs. They have 18 HP and they're so quick to kill. You can literally one hit them if you're, you know, level 60 plus. Everything in the wilderness has a 1 out of 50 drop rate to get the bag. So, you know, you can do your math. It's going to take you a couple minutes to be here. Not bad at all. I even have people say in my recent PK videos why you're bringing a looting bag. You know, just bring an extra food, etc. It's not worth it. But you guys got to think if I kill someone and someone else gets on me, I can put all that good loot in one spot while I pick up his possible food, and yeah, you get you get the idea, you can actually stay alive easier, and I find it a lot better. Plus, if you guys are going the Green Dragons, you're not even PKers, that's 28 extra inventory spots, definitely look into it. Okay, I'm just gonna jam this one in there, I literally found this at the GE about 30 minutes before I fully edited this video, 
Basically what you do is have a couple free to play accounts, no membership, and you put air runes in, fire runes, all that stuff for 4 GP, maybe even 3, I'm not sure what the current prices are, and you just wait like a month. You log back in, and then you sell them for 5, 6 GP, and you can also get rid of them quicker by trying to sell them to real people, because they do want them, because the cap is 20,000 an hour to buy them. Alright guys, so the next life hack I want to go over is for any Iron Man, any hardcore, or just maybe low levels that are scared to go in the wildy, um, you need an alt for sure to do this, but basically you just box yourself, really risk anything you want, and you could in theory never ever be attacked as long as you kick back your alt here and there. You could legit run past a 15 man, 126 max mage clan, and they couldn't do a thing about it. Sometime in everyone's runescape career, they will have to charge a dragonfire shield, unless you're one defense pure, but I'm gonna show you guys the quickest way to actually do it. I see a lot of people going out to KBD, maybe going to green dragons, do a nightmare zone telly, talk to Dominic, do a practice mode, accept Elvarg, you're obviously gonna have to do dragon slayer, hopefully you've done that quest if you're trying to do a dragonfire shield, which is 75 defense, but yeah guys, it hits like uh, three times per the speed that a green dragon would, and you know, green dragons don't always use the dragon fire anyway, and who wants to run the steel dragons? This is definitely the best way to do it, no problem for the tip. This tip is greatly going to help any 100 plus combat, hopefully any of you max mains know this by now, but I honestly guarantee you, you do not. Might as well jam this one in though, I got a redirection scroll from doing Nightmare Zone, I put it on my house tab, turn it into two Trollheim tabs, then I teleported the Trollheim, had one left, reverted that into a house tab, and then you have your telly again. It is Zami God Wars, I feel like 90% of everyone you know is doing it wrong. You can even watch Mr. Mammal Guides, you can watch, you can type in Zamora Guide and all of them are wrong guys. You don't want to be using Carols, you want to be using Max Tank Gear and Praying Mage. I know it's not what most people do, but it's actually how you need to tank Zami. Let me show you. Now I've even talked to a couple people with Max Capes about this, shout out to Schneider. And uh, yeah guys, it's confirmed, even by Rune Wiki, it hits through melee, hits 49s. Plus guys, if you have full tank, it's rarely gonna hit you, and none of the minions will basically hit you at all, so you're set. In a legit 15 minutes, I managed to do a 6 or 7 kill trip solo, which is uh, pretty good considering I haven't done Zami in like a year. In theory, I probably could have done like 10 to 15 to 20 kills if I had an SGS, Blood Barrage, and Guthans, so you gotta think about that guys. I am well aware this is not a farming video, but I'm sure 70% of my viewers are doing at least an herb run every week or so, so I want to show you guys what is the best herb to do and actually calc it out, because I know it does fluctuate, but I want to give you guys a decent idea, show you the XP per the gold, and uh, yeah, let's just go over it guys. Alright, so one of the more major life hacks I want to go over is basically an overall farming view, basing the new ultra compost with the current herb prices and XPs, and just checking it out guys. Alright, so this took me just a little bit of time, but I checked every price of every herb and seed, and then I looked up on Wikipedia how much XP you get per planting and farming each herb, so I did some calculations guys, let's look into it. So this might be common sense, but definitely use the new Ultra Compost. Looking at the stats right now, Super Compost is 1 to 8 disease ratio, Ultra is 1 to 10, and uh, you basically gain one extra herb if you use ultra, so it pays for you know you upgrading. It's definitely worth it. More XP, 20% more yield, highly suggested. So the next thing I want to cover is the herb XP per plant average. This one is pretty self-explanatory. You know you're starting at Raynar with 306, ending at Torstol about 2,000. This is per plant. I counted at eight herbs per plant. That's like the the rough estimate I would say. Even if one of your um patches dies. So yeah guys, this is what you'd be receiving, it's actually not that great, you know what I mean? If you were to do um, Aventos and do 6 patches, you're only going to be getting like 4k XP, which I guess isn't bad if you do a 5 of them a day plus. Alright, so this is very interesting, looking at Raynar, the highest gold you can get, and then Snapdragon is looking very well. I would never ever do Irrit guys, never. Uh, probably not even Dwarf, Torstal is pretty good for the XP. So the last thing I want to cover is the gold gain per XP. I know you guys have seen maybe Herblore guides or crafting and you waste 6 gold per 1 XP or 4 gold or 2, whatever the method is, but this you're actually going to gain 70 gold per Raynar, um, you know, 26 per Avento, etc, etc. I would never do Eerit guys, it's only 14 gold, not even, that is not worth it. I would also not do Dwarf Weed, which is pretty sad. Um, Catentine and Snapdragon if you're higher level. 
Definitely very good. Quorum even as well, guys. Sadly, with all the herbs and potions in the game lately, farming herbs is not as good. But it's still worth it guys, I would definitely do it. Very interesting checking out this info. So the last little tip I want to go over is using any type of item you have, mainly fishing, mainly woodcutting, anything like that, just using it on the deposit box and pressing 4. This will save yourself a couple seconds each time and it'll definitely add up. Another life hack is talking to the banker and going to the pin settings and changing it from reoccurring on logout versus every 5 minutes. This will definitely help you if you guys are hopping worlds, maybe PKing. I know the feeling guys, it's really annoying. But yeah guys, with that being said, I hope you do enjoy. Give me any type of, you know, constructive criticism on my first episode. Hopefully you did enjoy, you know, it was, it was so fun to make. And I have a lot more ideas guys, of videos down this alley. And I'll still be providing, you know, PK content and PVM and all that type of stuff. But I do want to put out some guides for, you know, medium levels. And yeah, like I said, don't forget about the giveaway. I'll be uh, posting a video in a day or two showing the winners. And if I hit you up, you'll definitely know. And I'll be doing another giveaway every couple weeks, guys. And lots of guides. And you guys should love it. Stay tuned. Peace. Oh.